Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we wrap up our Little Nightmares 2 coverage with a look beyond the scope of the game we did get to play, and a look at the one we didn't. What do I mean by this? Well, buyers who purchased the deluxe edition of the game received, among other things, an art book containing a ton of concepts. Now while some of these concepts are recognisable to anyone who experienced the journey of Mono and Six, most of it is actually quite different. So in this video we take a look at alternate endings, cut characters and environmental changes made during development, which shaped the game we finally did get to enjoy earlier this year. So sit back, relax and let's explore this nightmarish universe once more. Let us begin where the game does, in the wilderness surrounding the hunter's cabin. You can see during early development that creators Tarsia Studios had planned to include a selection of different traps that didn't make the final cut. A taxidermied pig pours a treacle-like substance from its opened belly, its offspring used as bait beneath. Meat is placed beneath rocks set to collapse when the bait is snatched. Spiky death pits covered in twigs and leaves were also on the agenda. Also, just like in the game, we see full-grown humans caught in many of these traps, festering away. It's likely these were cut simply due to time constraints. After all, the gauntlet to reach the hunter already contains a large variety of hazards. Any more may have felt like overkill, quite literally. This piece of art is interesting too. It seems to show Mono lowering himself in a bucket deep beneath the roots of a forest floor into a secret hideout of some kind. So some kind of cave system was obviously being considered too. Look next to this artwork showcasing a very warped looking building, trees holding it up in an X shape. Notice all the little gnomes perched from top to bottom too. This suggests gnomes were at one point in development far more prevalent in Little Nightmares 2, but for whatever reason, all but one were cut by release. Remember that moose head on the wall in the hunter's apartment? Well, this giant creature was to feature more prominently too. We see it here in this drawing, a ginormous beast towering above Mono and Six as they sneak through a creek below. This could have been an enemy, but my guess is that it was more of a creepy background detail, a creature ambling through the forest in the distance to unnerve the player as they explored. You may also have noticed the fleshy substance pouring from the trees. We do get to see flesh like this pouring from walls in the final game, but only within the signal tower itself. This suggests originally the signal tower's body was going to have a much farther reach. This was most likely changed so as to save the twist that the tower was a living entity until closer to the game's conclusion. Finally, we should touch on the hunter himself. Now his design seems to have remained the same throughout development. However, his encounter with our two pint-sized heroes has changed quite drastically. We can see his house went through many different incarnations before the developers settled on a, dare I say, more standard and normal looking design. However, the original interaction with this character took place across a vast barren plain, a divide between two sides of the forest where the hunter took pot shots at Mono and Six from his watchtower. They still had to hide behind tree stumps, in tall grass, and behind rocks, but it seems the hunter encounter was originally one long segment, and in the final game ended up as a multi-tiered chase sequence, which I personally feel works better. It also seems the hunter was to fall foul of one of his own traps, with Mono and Six then dispatching him with the shotgun, much like they did in the final game. Next up, the first of two completely cut characters. This is the barber. We can tell this not so much because of his stylish haircut, but rather because the environment he inhabits seems to be a barber shop, and his weapon of choice, a giant pair of scissors. Despite the old mantra, never run with scissors, the barber in fact does, chasing the poor child we see illustrated beside him. This mysterious character seems to be based on German folklore and the story of Suckerfum. 
It's also worth noting that this monstrous barber shows up throughout the Little Nightmares series in various portraits as seen here in the Residence DLC. It seems he was planned to be a bigger part of the game world for quite some time, but for whatever reason was cut from the final release. In fact, this area here as Mono and Six first enter the Pale City is a little reminiscent of the Barber's Lair. The chairs and overalls in particular look similar. Maybe he's just out for coffee, or consumed by the Signal Tower, or even being saved for a potential sequel or DLC content still to come. The Barber is certainly a monster I'm eager to see further explored in the future. The second character originally planned to show in Little Nightmares 2 was the school cook, or lunch lady. We can see she wore a netted hat to keep her hair from falling in the no doubt delicious food she prepared for her students. Dressed in stained overalls and thick rubber gloves, her face full of warts and big gaps in her teeth, she wasn't exactly easy on the eyes. We do actually run through the area this lunch lady was to inhabit, the kitchen. She is pictured here in the concept art serving lunches onto trays. Originally, Mono is supposed to sneak past this cook undetected, however in the final game we don't have to. The lunch lady appears to have met a sticky end already. Enter this secret room and we see her body dumped in an overturned bin within this meat locker. It seems she was modelled and ready to go, but cut last minute. Her placement in this bin a clever jab at her late deletion from the game world. I guess the school kids didn't appreciate her cuisine. While the Doctor ended up with a pretty terrifying appearance, his concept art is far more scary. The Doctor's original guise showcased drooping skin and eyes which looked as if they were about to fall out of his head. This look was born from his constant hanging upside down. With this in mind, it seems his gameplay mechanic always remained the same. What's interesting when examining concept art for the hospital stage is that we see the design changed completely throughout the development. It seems the original concept for the hospital stage was to reveal exactly how the Doctor changed his patients into the clattering mannequin-like experiments we encountered during our journey through these hellish halls. These experiments reveal the Doctor forcing his patients to submit to the broadcast of the signal tower, strapping them down to beds as tendrils grew from their faces and reached up to the glow of the screens above. While some of the locations do make it into the final game, such as the tall room full of hanging beds, they are all modified in some regard. I do feel it would have been really cool to get a little more insight into the Doctor and his experimentation, especially when it looked as creepy as we see here in these sketches. But obviously these concepts didn't fit well with the overall level design and perhaps weren't practical during gameplay. While we did get both the Pale City and the viewers living within its warped walls for the final release of Little Nightmares 2, if we take a look at the art book, we can see they didn't always look this way. The initial concept was to have these monstrosities literally growing into the furniture and merging with the very TV sets they became addicted to. It also seems one idea was to have Mono and Six travel through a sitcom being filmed with these distorted denizens. We see the boom mic hanging down in this sketch here, and a cast of characters posed on the sofa before cameras. This would have been an eerie, yet comical scene to travel through, but was likely only ever a fun concept. An area of the Pale City almost completely cut is the train station. Of course, in the game that we did play, Mono must escape Thin Man as he is chased through a partially derailed train carriage. In the planning stages of Little Nightmares 2, an entire train station was to feature, and we can see most of this location was in fact fully developed. We even see an image of Mono and Six sitting on the train itself as it takes them deeper into the heart of the Pale City. What's more, Thin Man actually appeared on the train as it pulled into the station as seen in this artwork here. So it seems the entire Thin Man encounter was to play out differently early on in development. 
On the topic of Thin Man himself, we also get to look at his design and how it changed over the years. Initial concepts revealed a laughing, ghoulish looking character who looked very similar to G-Man from Half-Life. It also appears that his prison within the Signal Tower looked quite different. Instead of a dark, featureless room, it was to be a room full of brightly lit TV sets, allowing for Thin Man, and by extension the Signal Tower itself, to spy on every inch of the world around them. Let's move on to the Signal Tower next. Now this is one of the locations that seems to have changed most during development. I am confident the reasons for this was not only because some of the original radical ideas seen here in these drawings would have been a nightmare to bring to life, but also to maintain the game's desired teen rating. In the final game, Mono uses his powers to walk through the city and to the front entrance of the ominous tower. In these concepts, we see something very different. All manner of twisted and warped creatures, both man and beast, marching under a hypnotic gaze and into the tower's front entrance, which looks like a giant thin man head. Mono even stands inside the mouth of one of these wretched creatures to gain access. Inside the tower itself, we see giant faces peering over the top of walls, Corridors bending and taking on different shapes as headless men chase Mono, and giant masses of fleshy creatures merging in a sea of misery. We got to see a toned down glimpse of this concept at the very end of Little Nightmares 2, as the tower showed its true form and chased Mono and Six down. Another scrapped concept was for the tower to form a giant baby looking creature made from the bodies of all it had consumed, very much like the ending of anime film Akira. We also get a glimpse at a sequence where Mono was to guide Monster 6 through the halls of the tower, holding her hand and working together even with 6 in this giant form. Again, these concepts most likely would have been too gruesome and difficult to get working properly in the game. They do look horrifying though, and it's certainly exciting to get a glimpse into the journey Little Nightmares 2 took during development. Finally, we have an alternate ending and some additional yet familiar characters. First up, the alternate ending. Now we've already seen how Thin Man's ending changed and how Mono's journey to the Signal Tower took a once radically different direction. A third and final ending was to take place in a snowy tundra, with Mono dragging a dying six up the side of this mountain and toward the Signal Tower for shelter. This seems to have been conceptualised at a point where the story for Little Nightmares 2 was quite different. Even though I'm sure it was always planned to end up roughly where it did, the journey to get there, as seen here, wasn't always the same. A snowy environment is one thing we've never seen in any Little Nightmares game to date, so fingers crossed DLC or a third entry in the series can make this happen. Next, we have this ragtag group of kids. Of the six children pictured here, we can clearly identify two, Mono and Six, both appearing in the final game. However, while the other four do not show up as playable characters, we do see evidence of them in the digital comics released in the lead up to the launch of Little Nightmares 2. This kid holding a lollipop can be found in the school story and in this picture within the hunter's house. The girl with the bloody nose and pigtails can be seen in the hospital chapter here and in the digital comic hospital story. The child in the ghost costume appears in the viewer chapter of the comics and is seen in various portraits throughout the pale city. Finally, this infant dressed in Lost Boys style hunting attire is seen in the wilderness chapter of the comic and his glitching remains here in the secret area within chapter 1. So these kids all tie into the universe of Little Nightmares, and perhaps a four part DLC could launch to flesh out their tragic backstories. I'm certainly keeping my fingers crossed for something along those lines, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments section below, and remember to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.